Miss Samantha Horn, Miss Laura Collins, it's indeed an honor to welcome you today at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. My first question will be, um, the Auschwitz Institute for Peace and Reconciliation is currently uh, developing regional networks for genocide and mass atrocity prevention in cooperation with local partners as in Latin America and in Africa. Um, could you tell us more about those networks, um, how they function and how they are implemented and what are the differences? Of course, of course. Of course. Um, I can start with the Latin American okay. network. Um, the Latin American Network for Genocide and Mass Atrocity Prevention was launched in March of this past year. It, it took place, the launching took place in Buenos Aires uh, over the course of two days where we had 18 member countries of Latin America present through their governmental institutions. Um, we had ministries of foreign affairs, ministries of justice, ministries of defense, as well as human rights authorities such as ombudsman's offices. Um, and essentially what the network is designed to do is twofold. It is an entirely new regional body and it's on the regional level its main focus is education and training. We have through our extended team of experts um, that are localized to the Latin American region we have developed a training curriculum that has been edited and accepted by all of the member countries of the network and this curriculum will be utilized um, for training seminars that will take place over the course of the next three to four years. And essentially there are two week training programs. One week will take place in Auschwitz in Poland, similar to our global efforts. And one week will take place in a location in Latin America that has also borne witness to mass atrocities. Um, as of right now, it stands that they'll take place in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, in Montevideo, in Uruguay, and in Guatemala City, in Guatemala. Um, and these training seminars basically have as their end goal um, the idea that the training will then be localized to each member state's national structure and will be implemented there for all civil servants to be trained in genocide and mass atrocity prevention. Um, and they'll utilize this regional curriculum and then tailor it essentially with our facilitation to, to their own needs domestically. Um, the other part of, of the Latin American network, our regional network, is a national focus. Each member state is charged with identifying specific areas within their current human rights infrastructure or peace infrastructure where they can place a genocide prevention or mass atrocity um, focus, prevention focus, um, to develop new programs uh, specifically tailored for genocide and mass atrocity prevention or to develop or create entirely new new mechanisms. Um, I can give an example of uh, Argentina, what I spoke about in our talk today. Argentina last month has launched an entirely new uh, national mechanism for genocide and mass atrocity prevention. It's essentially an inter interministerial body. Nine institutions within the Argentinian government sit on this body. Uh, and it is essentially a policy building network. It's a communication network. It allows um, each institution that is charged with a mandate for human rights and atrocity prevention in the country to sit at one table and to implement national policy on the ground. Um, it's also the body that's going to facilitate the implementation of the training curriculums for their civil servants. So, so this is an, a real-time example of what a national program under the umbrella of the network actually looks like. Similar initiatives are also underway in Uruguay, Paraguay, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. So, so these are some of the examples of the national programs um, that are coming out. And, and other um, countries are, are working more specifically with civil society actors, where you have very strong bases of civil society that have come out of the times of dictatorship. And so, um, and so the governments are, are collaborating more with their civil society networks yep. and developing new national mechanisms based on that type of infrastructure. So it, it's a little bit different, yep. as you can see. So, yep. so um, in the case of Africa, um, we're really taking the model that we're using in Latin America that Samantha's just described to um, use that in our work in Africa. The main difference really with the African Network for Genocide and Mass Atrocity Prevention is that while in Latin America we've seen the establishment of an entirely new collaborative um, institution, in Africa we really see that um, 
partnership with pre-existing regional and uh, sub-regional African bodies is, is the way to see the development of the African network for genocide and mass atrocity prevention. Again, similarly, we'll have um, two one-week training seminars. We really think that we need to have um, the, the power of place aspect that Samantha described in our, in our discussion today, um, inherent in both of our, our um, regional networks. So to keep that in place, we'll have our training seminars in Auschwitz in Poland and then also in a location in Africa. They've yet to be decided, but um, in terms of the, the progression of our, our regional network, we're really looking to have dialogue with all the, the, the EU particularly and their thoughts on, on location and also with um, member states as well. My next question would be, um, what are the tools the local partners uh, you talked about before, such as the AU, possesses in matters of securitization and democracy building until now? How can they be improved also in Latin America? Um, with regards to the African Union, just the African Union Commission rather, just more generally, um, they really present themselves as the, the natural regional um, leader um, for the establishment of the African Network for Genocide and Mass Atrocity Prevention with us, um, the Institute of the Auschwitz Institute for Peace and Reconciliation, basically due fundamentally to their organisational structure that encompasses um, the promotion of peace and security, democracy, um, stabilisation and creating greater unity between African peoples and um, states and also due to their contacts with other sub-regional organisations, ICGLR and, and ECOWAS for example. Uh, and, and they also have as part of their constitutional charter they have Article 4H, which basically does charge them with the mandate. Yeah. So, which they've never actually fulfilled, yeah. obviously. Yeah, and so, so we're hoping that we can we can serve them in that respect. And so, they're they've then presented themselves as as the house essentially for the network. But the sub-regional organizations like the ICGLR, which already actually has established genocide prevention committees um, in Tanzania and Kenya and so on. So it, it is they already do have established you know national mechanisms, same thing with Rwanda, and a regional network for this. So so to build on those those partners and, and their already established work is key. And gain from um, their expertise, really. Exactly, yep. exactly. And same with ECOWAS. You know, you have a system in ECOWAS, ECOWARN. They already have early warning and risk assessment mechanisms. So these are the types of, of tools that we're going to build upon. But many of the countries don't have those, and so it's really about filling in those gaps. And in Latin America, um, Mainly what we've seen is that the ministries themselves, each of the ministries within the countries, already have human rights desks and establish established human rights infrastructure. And so what really has proven to be effective there is then to charge these offices with specifically a focus in genocide and mass atrocity prevention. So it's a shift, yeah. basically, a new lens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last question uh, would be on uh, how do the reconciliation method and processes differ according to the region of the world, especially comparing Latin America, Africa and Europe, and what are the specific basic principles? Sure. Um, specifically in Latin America you hear the words truth and justice. These are the big reconciliation, well not reconciliation, these are the big transitional justice tools. Reconciliation itself is, is kind of a nasty word in Latin America. They focus much more on um, on transitional trials, truth commissions, um, and investigations into past atrocities, specifically dealing with mainly the dictatorships and disappearances, forced disappearances, and um, and atrocities against the indigenous populations. And so you really do mainly hear about truth uh, processes and justice um, in Latin America. In Africa, it's quite different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in Africa, you have special courts, of course. In Sierra Leone, you had um, the tribunal in Africa. But also, I mean, I think they take a, a, a very localized approach as well, particularly with the, 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 the courts in, in Rwanda. Oh, get checkers, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so they, and I think you almost need that dual strategy sometimes because following a genocide, I mean, an entire society is completely devastated. Institutions don't exist anymore. There aren't any judges or, I mean, there may be, but not a lot. So I think it's really, you need different approaches, dual approaches, the case. And also, I mean, 
courts can't try everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So perhaps you can get maybe the top level generals, but then of course it it's also affected different levels of society. So I think... In, in Africa, you seem to have, like, for instance, in Rwanda, you had civilians killing civilians, yeah, massive amounts of civilians. You can't try all those yeah. people. <laughs> you can't try all those people. Yeah. And so in Africa, you see that it really is m more, they're focusing more on reconciliation. How do we yeah. reintegrate these people into society? How do neighbors come back together? This is the challenge that they're really facing, it seems, because in Latin America, you had it, it was the government committing the atrocities. It wasn't civilian on civilian. Yeah. So that's that's probably where you see the main ideological main difference. difference. Yeah. yeah, essentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a really Thank interesting you. interview.